So if you're anything like me and you don't want to ground your older drones or drones that don't come with remote ID built in, and you don't feel comfortable giving the FAA rule that two finger salute and simply not complying, what if I told you that I not only found a module that's about half the price of what the modules used to be, and have I come up with some hacks that will still allow you to be compliant with the rule, but will prevent Karen or some thug from seeing your drone and your location? Yes, I said prevent your drone from being seen with the apps like Drone Scanner and Open Drone ID. So let me show you what I'm talking about with a quick test. So right now, this is configured at the factory defaults. All you have to do is attach this to the drone, simply turn it on and it will recognize that the GPSs are seen and it will flash in a sequence every four seconds showing you that it's compliant with Remote ID, that it's transmitting properly. So let's go ahead and take off with this and see what Karen sees on the app. Okay, so we're flying now. We should be in the range of where Karen should be able to see us. So over here is the actual map that Karen is seeing while I'm flying. Now she can't see me, but she can see the drone in the sky. Okay, Karen, can you see the drone now? Can you see me flying? I should be somewhere nearby you now. Yeah, I hear it. Oh, now I see it. I see it. You should see it on the drone scanner app. What do you see? I see your location, my location, and the drone location all on the app. I see the path of the drone. It looks like it's circling. I'm going to land here. I'm going to reconfigure the module with the hacks I'm talking about that should still be compliant with the remote ID rule but should make it so that Karen cannot see this drone with any of the drone scanning apps on their phone. So let's give that a try. All right, so I've just reconfigured the module. Karen shouldn't be able to see our path in the sky. Now I'm flying in the same place I was before, same exact location where she was able to see locations. Okay, Karen, I'm in the same location now. Uh, can you see the drone? You should be able to see the same thing as before. Yes, I hear the drone and I can see it too. It does not look like it reconnected. Do you see the drone popping up? It looks like I should be about on top of you now and should see it on the drone scanner app. What do you see? No, it hasn't connected and I don't see anything on the map. Okay, so still nothing. No. Okay, so now that's what we were hoping for. Completely compliant with remote ID, but Karen can't see it in the app. So let's head into the studio and I'll fill you in on all the products that are available and the hacks for this remote ID module. So welcome back to the studio and today we're talking specifically add-on modules for existing and new drones without remote ID. And in case you're wondering, the remote ID rule does not grandfather in older drones. So if you have an older drone that's either above 249 grams or you're going to register your drone for any reason regardless of the weight, you will need remote ID on it after September of 2023. And if you want more information on the remote ID rule itself, I'll put a video up here that I did that should help explain a little more the detail of what the requirements are. So let's talk about the remote ID modules themselves. So these happen to be from Blue Mark and they do all kinds of remote ID modules and remote ID type of equipment and other equipment as well. But today we're gonna to be talking about three of these modules. They have a standalone one and they have a couple different ones here. And let's go through those just so you can have an outline, some context to what we're talking about. So the one we're gonna be talking about first here and the most on this channel is the DB120 which is a standalone module, which you put it on your drone, turn it on, it transmits the GPS compliant with remote ID rules. So you don't have to touch any of the configuration at all. It just works in the US without touching it. Now for some other countries, you may need to change some of the parameters and we'll talk about the details of the parameters here in just a minute. Now the second module is going to be the DB121. And as you can see, that is a circuit board model but it does come with the GPS and the antenna already built in. So you can see this is much smaller, obviously, and it comes with everything you need except the battery. This is a much smaller profile and much lighter, of course, but you have to supply the battery power. The third option here is the DB122. And as you can see, it comes with an antenna, but it does not come with a GPS module. So if you don't have a GPS module, you can buy that from Bluemark and you can plug it in. But if you have your own, you can buy just this module as well. I did work to come up with an Alien Drones exclusive discount. And if you use that code at checkout, not only will you help this channel out, but you'll get a little discount in the end as well. So at checkout, don't forget to put in this discount code. Okay, okay, so 
I can hear you saying, hey, in the intro you talked about hacks to make this module so it wasn't visible to Karens, right? So just get on with it. Okay, fair enough. So the first thing you're gonna wanna do is you're gonna wanna go to Bluemark's website and make sure you have the most current version of the firmware. Now, if you don't, you're gonna wanna download that to the same device that we're going to connect to the remote ID module with. That way, when you do the update firmware, you can just go grab it and put it in. And I've already downloaded that firmware version because I know we made some changes uh, with the manufacturer. Turn the module on and there's a little switch here and you'll see the green lights come on telling us that we're powered. And then over on the side, there's a little button. We're gonna press that once and that will put us in configuration mode. Now, you know you're in configuration mode because you're gonna see a little red light there. That lets us know that we're transmitting Wi-Fi that we can connect with the phone or with your PC. So now that we're transmitting, we're gonna go ahead and connect with our device and what you want to do is go into your settings, go to your Wi-Fi, and you'll see Drone Beacon there as a Wi-Fi to connect to. Now go ahead and connect to that Wi-Fi. Now if it gives you some prompt about connecting to internet or not having internet, just accept that. We're not going to connect to the internet. We just need to connect to the Wi-Fi that's on this module. So once you do that, we're going to go into the settings here. And there's two ways that you can get into this little web page. One is you can go to your browser and enter the address that's here on your screen, this IP address. And the second way is you could scan the QR code that they show in the manual and it brings up the same exact web page. So however you get there, it's the same configuration. So if we go to the firmware tab, you will see a place where you can choose the file. And in this case, it is called the db120.bin. You want that bin file. So you choose that file from your device and do flash image. So after that's done, you're gonna to want to exit then re-enter the configuration mode and double check the firmware version to make sure that it upgraded properly. So under this general tab, the first thing you're gonna see is the serial number. And this serial number is the number that you're going to use when you register your drone and it asks for the remote ID number. That's the number you're going to use. So if you're a hobbyist and you're gonna use this number, this will be the same one you'll use for all your drones. And you can drop this module from drone to drone to drone, that's no problem because you have one registration number, which is actually for yourself. If you're a 107, this is unique and every drone is going to have to have its own unique remote ID module. So every one of these, you're going to have to have another module, unfortunately. Now here in the US, the UAS box, you don't have to change anything. You can leave it just like that. The operator tab, you don't have to do anything with. But of course, in some other countries, you're going to want to check with your local regulations because they do require sometimes a special registration number that's going to be broadcast. And that goes in this box. Under the flight tab, you can put in optional information about your flight if you would like to. Of course, you can just leave that blank. And the radio tab, now this is where the magic happens. And as I mentioned, I did work with Bluemark, and of course, we added options even with the firmware. That's why we want to make sure you have the most current firmware version. And that firmware adds some options so that we make sure that it makes it the most difficult we can for Karen to see us in the normal app. First one we're going to check is the WLAN and we're going to change that to WLAN Beacon. Next, transmission period, change to one second. Then the WLAN channel, we're gonna to change to six if it's not there already. Now this new option that's available with the new firmware, reply to active WLAN scanning. We wanna make sure that's disabled. So uncheck that to make sure that this is disabled. The transmit power, we're going to leave at 18 dBm. And before you exit, make sure you go down to the bottom and push the save button. That'll make sure that they're saved into the module. Something that I think bears repeating is that the reason we're doing this is because we want to be compliant with the rule. I've always said that I don't mind being compliant, but I didn't like that the pilot's location was transmitted to anybody who wanted to see it with a regular cell phone walking around and they load a free app and they can see where you are. So this makes us compliant with the FAA rule and it makes it very difficult if not impossible for some Karen or some thug that's going to try to steal our equipment to see us with using a regular cell phone. Now the interesting thing with this is law enforcement if they want to see this there is different equipment that's available that's more advanced than a cell phone and that will allow law enforcement or FAA to still see the remote ID broadcast, no problem coming out of this module. So that's how we're compliant, made sure that we're broadcasting according to the rule, but we've made it really frustrating for Karens or some thieves that want to locate the pilot. So drop me a note below and let me know what you think of this remote ID module and configuration we've done here. Really appreciate it. And if you did find anything of use or something you didn't know before, I always do appreciate that like. And with that, until next time and next video, good flying.